This is a really simple character controller that I made in Unity. And just to make things look interesting, I 3D modeled this cactus character in Blender and used it. It's just for demonstration purposes. It has nothing to do with anything. So the tutorial is designed for you to follow along without this. So what I'm gonna do is turn on this little like capsule around it and show you what's actually happening with the physics system behind it. This cactus doesn't have any collisions on it. It's just sort of there for looking cool. The capsule itself is what's doing the work. So what you can see is it can move forward and backward and it can turn right and it can turn left and it can also jump. So this character controller may look very similar to others that you've seen, but one of the things that's really cool about it is it works with rigid body physics. And what that means is an ordinary character controller that's built into Unity, if you look at the documentation, looks like this. So it is a character controller component, and it does not make use of rigid body physics, which means that it can't interact with physical objects in the environment. And it even says that down here that you can affect objects using physics if you write your own scripts. Well, that gets pretty complicated pretty quickly. So I've come up with a way, let me just demonstrate how this works. There is a rigid body on this character, as well as this cube up here that I just kind of stretched out. And what that allows you to do is you can push and you can move things and interact with them in interesting ways. Well, this is really something I was interested in getting working because I'm trying to get this to work with Unity ML agents. So machine learning agents that learn how to solve puzzles. And so there's some really interesting puzzles you can solve if you can work with rigid body physics. Now in their examples, in the Unity ML Agents project, they do use rigid body, however, they apply forces. So it's kind of like if you had a, an object moving on a really slippery surface or on ice, and if you pushed it, then it would keep moving a little bit in a direction rather than just naturally stopping like we expect when we play a video game. So this moves in a different way. It actually pushes the location forward and then it just uses physics for jumping. So that's how this works. And now we can talk about how it works. And I wanna to point to the companion tutorial for this that I made on immersivelimit.com. I highly recommend you check this out because it is detailed step-by-step, -step, includes things that I might've forgotten in this video. And if there are any updates to this that need to be done, then I'll make sure to put them here. Plus any other helpful resources, if I come across it, anything that was unclear, I'll make sure to clarify it here. And it also has all of the script that you'll need so that you don't have to write it down as I'm explaining it. Cause I'm not gonna do a full code along tutorial. I'm just gonna sort of walk through it. This is considered the full code along tutorial here. So if you want all this information, head to the link in the description or go to immersivelimit.com and look in our tutorials. So I wanna talk about the problems with setting this up. So basically you need to have a way to detect if the object is hitting the ground. And so let me just hit play again and show you why that is. So you have this capsule collider here, and let me turn this back on just for, for visual, that is naturally resting on the ground because of rigid body physics. If you look at the character itself, it has a capsule collider on it. That's this green sort of wireframe thing. The capsule itself, actually, I have the collider turned off. So if I have this off, the capsule collider is still there. It also has a rigid body on it. So that means it has mass, that gravity affects it. And I did freeze the rotation so that the rotation is completely controlled by uh, our script rather than by the environment itself. What I didn't want was for something to knock it and then it for it to start just kind of slowly spinning or quickly spinning. We don't want to freeze position because we want the environment to affect its position. Now, one nice thing is if we wanted to, even with this model, we could, <laughs> we can move this around and affect the position of this thing right here. So that's kind of neat too. And if this were resting on top, like maybe um, on top of this right here, 
Let me just move this over here and show you. You can make things like elevators as well. So back into scene mode, you would of course move this with a script, not just manually in the game, but um, that's that's something that's added as functionality this way too. But in order to do any of this and allow jumping, you need to be able to detect whether the character is on the ground. And so that's really the only complicated part here is detecting whether something's on the ground. And so typically you use a ray cast for this, but it turns out that ray casts have an interesting downside to them. So let me explain what I mean by a ray cast. So you have, I made this illustration in Blender. I thought it would be a good way to show it off. I have a capsule like this, and it's just kind of resting on a surface right now. There's no actual physics in this. This is purely for demonstration, and we're going to view it from the side. If we're on the ground, we have contact right here, and our ray cast can point straight down, and it will detect if it hits something. And let me just show you really quick. If I move this downward, I actually put in a little red line here to indicate a ray cast coming down, and this is where it would hit the, the point here. This is where it would hit the object. Now, in this case, the character is not grounded. I would consider this not grounded. It's floating above the ground. We would not want to jump in this case. So the natural thought is, well, let's make sure that it doesn't shoot that far down. We'll only make it shoot just a tiny bit. And then if it hits the ground, then it's considered grounded and we, we can allow jumping at that point. Otherwise, we don't allow jumping because if it's up this high in the air and we press jump again, we don't want to be able to jump again because otherwise we could just fly forever. We just hold down the space bar and we can fly for as long as we want. It might be fun for a minute, but it's going to ruin a lot of puzzles that we might want to put into our game. And eventually it's just going to rocket off into the sky. So it seems pretty straightforward until, let me just reset this position here, you want to rotate it maybe like this and put it on a slope. Well, I would consider this still grounded because it's on a slope, that's fine. It's not a very steep slope, but our ray cast now needs to be longer in order for it to work properly. And what about if we move it even further? Well, at some point, we're obviously not gonna wanna, uh, want it to work, so we need to have some limit, but we kinda want it to be based on how far our, uh, our slope limit is. So we kind of want to be able to specify like, well, if it's past 45 degrees, we probably don't want to accept it. But if it's anything less than that, then we probably want to allow it to be grounded on that surface so it can jump on these surfaces. So let's just look really quick at what like a, maybe about the most we would want to do is probably a 60 degree angle, something like that ever. I can't imagine you would want to be able to allow a character to go any steeper than that. But look at how long that is. And even if you do a 45 degree angle like this, that's pretty long. And the problem then is right around this point, then we've got a array that's this long, it's this long off the ground. So we need something that makes it work relative to the slope. And the cool thing is in Unity, we're able to raycast and then get the angle of the slope it hits. So I have a little diagram here in the tutorial where it kind of explains that we get this normal vector and we know the radius of this capsule. And so from that information, we can actually figure out how long this total line can be. And since we know the radius, we just subtract the radius from it. So I explain in a lot more detail, but essentially it's really basic trigonometry, cosine theta equals adjacent side over hypotenuse. We know the adjacent side to this angle. We know the angle. So we just get this and subtract the radius. So that's how the actual functioning code works in here for detecting is grounded. And then let me show you kind of how this functionality is hooked up to the character. So the character itself has the capsule collider and the rigid body. And you can see that I've, cu I've uh, customized these a little bit. Uh, all these customization values are on the on the website. And then I attach a simple character controller script and an input controller script. The reason we split these up is so that we can 
control movement and keep it nice and separate, but then we can do inputs from either this script or in the case of Unity ML Agents, which is what I initially wanted to use this for, we can control it from the agent script. So we can set some values on it that then tell it to move forward or turn. And so the neural network can actually affect the position of this and jump. And it's written in a way where it's updated in fixed update so that it works really well with the neural network, basically. So let's take a look at these scripts really quick. And I won't do a full walkthrough, but let me just sort of show them off. Input controller is really simple. It gets the input from Unity's input system. It processes it just a tiny bit for vertical, horizontal, and jump, and applies those to the character controller in the way of setting these variables on it. Forward input, turn input, and jump input. That's all this does. And that's why, even if you're doing ML agents, the code to make that work inside ML agents, which I have on here, is really simple. So it's really simple to integrate with whatever project you're working and to build on top of. And then we have the simple character controller. Now I was experimenting with, I, when I initially wanted to set up a character controller, I looked to Unity's example. Uh, they have a 3D game sample that I thought would be a perfect place because they have a character in there. It uses a capsule collider just like this. Their character controller script was like 700 or more lines of code. It was really complicated. It had animations. It didn't use physics. They calculated their own physics. It got really complicated really quick. This is only 87 lines of code. So it was it's like 10% of of the length of that. So it's much easier to understand. And the first part of it is just setting up a few variables. So slope limit, move speed, turn speed, whether to allow jump, jump speed. And then you have uh, whether it's grounded. So this is something that's accessible outside. And then we have the inputs here. So this is all very simple stuff. I explained it in the tutorial. But let me just talk really quick about what's happening. So every fixed update, we do a ground check, and then we process actions. So the ground check uses the Raycast logic that I was just explaining. It does a little transformation logic just to make sure that if you set the agent to like a different scale, like if, let's say you just made it, I don't know, really wide like this, that it should still work right. It doesn't. I guess that broke something. Uh, I tried to make it as robust, but I, I guess I didn't quite account for that. <laughs> so anyway, it's supposed to work. I, it may need some tweaking. If you go outside the boundaries of expectations for this, I don't know what's going to happen. But then the process actions here is what uh, does some basic stuff. So turning is really simple. It just clamps the input between negative one and one and multiplies it by the turn speed and then it just directly rotates your character. For movement, it does something very similar. It takes your forward input and multiplies it by the move speed. Um, in both of these cases, we need to factor in the fixed delta time, which is like 0 0.02 seconds, so that it's not applying really fast, and it moves the rigid body. So this isn't applying any actual velocity to the character, it's just moving its position. And finally, the jump, just adds an upward force uh, as a velocity change. But it only does that if jump input is true, if allow jump is true, and if is grounded is true. So it needs to make sure that it's firmly seated on the ground, which means it's below the slope limit, and it also hits something within our acceptable distance. So the cool thing about this is you can get results like this that are quite easy to uh, turn into interesting puzzles. It's really simple to build on top of. And because you have access to things like the is grounded state outside of the script, what I was able to do is set up this neat little particle emitter on here so that it looked like dirt was being kicked up. And the particle system is set up. There's kind of a lot of things to configure here, so I don't really want to go through the whole thing. But essentially, I just set it up so that it would kick up these little uh, spheres of dirt, basically. I, I had a little mesh that I made. 
and it's using mesh render mode and the small rock mesh, and it's just making those come out of this little donut shape. But I didn't want it to be on all the time. I really just wanted it to be on when I was turning, moving forward, and I didn't want it to be on when I was jumping. So even if I'm moving forward, it turns off when I'm jumping. So I wrote a little script here that's attached to that that gets the character controller and the particle system, and it basically just says, should I emit? Well, that's true if it's grounded, obviously, and either forward input isn't zero or turn input isn't zero. So you can do some really interesting things with this functionality and sort of build on top of this. So that's all I wanted to say in this tutorial. Uh, I do want to teach more of the ML agents side of things. So if you are interested in that, then stay tuned in the future. I will probably be coming out with another tutorial of how to how to use this character controller. The plan is to provide sort of a set of challenges on our new community forum. That's at community.immersivelimit.com so that we can do puzzles like this. Maybe we have a puzzle that's, uh, you know, the the goal is to get the cube off of the platform and then push it over here so that we can jump up on top of it and then jump up on top of something else or or get a, get a coin or something like that that would be floating in the air that you could only access if you were on top of the cube. Something like that. So uh, stay tuned for that. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful. And if you have any questions, let us know. And if anything is unclear, we'll do our best to update it in our tutorial here.